you're certainly seemingly in good shape. 23CR1738 is now called. And how do you pronounce your first name? Mahargany. Mahargany. Okay. Broussard. And you were here with Mr. Lewis, your attorney, pleaded guilty. That was in April uh, to this indictment alleging aggravated assault in 23CR1738. A pre sentence report has. Well, it's not the only one, is it? There were showing three cases. Three cases. So it was 23 CR 1738, aggravated assault. 23 CR 1739, aggravated assault. It should be 23 CR. Two 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 should be twenty two twenty two aggravated assault. There is an outstanding a fourth case twenty three CR one seven four zero that was not pleaded to. That's going to be dismissed. That's correct, Judge. Okay. All right. So these three cases alleging second degree felonies of aggravated assault with deadly weapons uh, have. Uh, we have proceeded forward on those. You have entered pleas of guilty. And again, uh, Mr. Lewis is here representing you. And pre-sentence reports on each of these have been prepared. Have the parties had an opportunity to review it? Any corrections or changes to it? No, from the state. Yes, Not from the state, Judge. All right. What we have here is an agreement in each of these cases of a cap of eight years imprisonment. So... We are looking thus at uh, no less than two nor more than eight years confinement in prison on one tier, two or three of these. A deferred or unadjudicated probation, which can be up to 10 years in length on probation, where the defendant is not found guilty and uh, placed on unadjudicated uh, probation. Then I think that's it, isn't it? Uh, regular probation is not an option with the court since we have a deadly weapon, namely a firearm use in the commission of these crimes. So two options there in directions. I have received a... two notes or letters from uh, one is from Diane Broussard, who is your sister. And another is from Alicia Broussard, who is going to be your mom, your mother. Okay. Let me, let me just do this because I just seen you. Just briefly, have y'all had seen a copy of these? I told him I didn't have any objections to them being in jail. How long have you been in jail now? Do you... Eight months. Oh, well, it's not from, and it says at the end of one of these, please forgive my sister. I, it's not for me to do that. That's not, I'm. Not the one who does that. I guess maybe our creator and the uh, victims here in these cases. So the parties have had a chance to review uh, this. Any corrections or changes uh, to this? Not from the state. All right. It's, then the pre sentence reports in each case, for each case, which are prepared in one report here uh, or made a part of the record for all purposes. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Judge. Um, judge, of course, these are some definite serious uh, cases involved with these aggravated assaults with deadly weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, even given that, I do believe that Ms. Broussard is someone whose future is definitely still uh, salvageable 
um, she doesn't have any criminal history. She she has was being had been very forthcoming about her involvement in this in this in this allegation. Um, it was definitely a situation where uh, it was definitely a family dispute that definitely arose from. Uh, she had just met her father in January of 23. He passed away in June of 23. This allegation happened in September. So it was basically a situation where she was trying to still maintain relationship with her father's side of the family. And, um, and, just, and, and of course, it just did not, uh, I think through, through the grieving process and everything, I think it was just a situation where uh, they just couldn't get along, which was led up to what happened on this day. Um, she admits that she definitely was intoxicated and under the influence of, of, of drugs at the time of, of the offense. Uh, she does, she's, she was clearly open with, with probation, PSI writer, about any substance abuse, abuse that she has had. Um, and she has taken it on her own initiative to try to get some help that has been available to her by attending AA classes and, and church while she's been incarcerated there at the county jail. Um, I also see that just she has had a, some mental health diagnosis since she's been there. Um, I believe that there's some definite vehicles available through the probation department that she can definitely benefit from uh, going forward. But definitely, you know, to help with her decision making and things of that nature, because even as we see from her educational history that there was some um, educational uh, uh, developmental issues that she was diagnosed with early on. So a, a combination of that developmental history plus the mental health history, uh, she'll be able to get that uh, uh, get help for that and definitely keep her going on the right track as far as being able to care for her daughter. Um, she has been able to hold the job and and, and uh, employ her. She definitely wants to continue on with that. Um, she does have some family support as you see from the letters that came in from her mother and her aunt. Um, although they're not physically here today right now, they've normally been here at each of her other four days. Um, I just, I, and of course, you she would like to address the court as far as uh, as far as how she feels as far as about uh, moving forward. The judge, we definitely are asking that the court that we consider uh, placing her on deferred adjudicated probation. I think I think uh, she does have the motivation she's necessary to complete it successfully and to be able and be able to uh, be someone that we wouldn't have to worry about seeing her here again or any other. Of the issue the mm -hmm. state of texas judge she's kind of got me in a, a pickle here and here's the reason why she has given some information as a matter of fact she told who the shooter was which um is true that much we know she told the truth about but she keeps limiting her responsibility in the whole thing and the reason is she keeps trying to place herself in the back seat when every other witness says she was driving the vehicle. She was driving it earlier that day and that one of the aggravated assaults was trying to run over somebody with a, with a motor vehicle. And then texting them and telling them she'd be back. And then she did came back and that's when the shooting occurred. So on one hand, she's tried to rectify some of the situation, but on the other hand, she's tried to distance herself from it. And unfortunately, this is part of the problem we have with Jefferson County is this Everybody solves their problems with with guns and these drive-bys and, and trying to hurt people. And it just puts me in a spot to where I have to ask for penitentiary time. So we'd ask for eight years. And, 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 and just to kind of clear, I'm, as far as the minimization goes, I think that goes to some of the, the drug use that on the on the day in question, which she's openly admitted to that she definitely was under influence and doesn't remember everything that happened how how it went. But the uh significant major parts of of the uh of the offense she has been fully upfront cooperative with with uh with law enforcement for this point. Okay. We've got two indictments 
where George Mosley is the complainant and one alleges being the defendant shot this uh, complainant and then also in another indictment struck the complainant with a vehicle. Yes, sir. And then we've got uh, a Britanna Lewis who was shot. Yes, sir. Confused about it. Yes, the automobile happened earlier that day at about eleven o'clock in the morning. That's that last paragraph down there. I think on the on the facts of the case, and then shooting occurred later. Okay, and what's this? Uh, other uh, person Ford, last name Ford. Maya Ford was also in the house, but did not get shot. They were uninjured. Uh, what did you want to say? I want to say I apologize to the court I committed in a crime. I also apologize for being able to see me. I sincerely apologize for the family, the victim that took place. <laughs> The victim that took place, and all I ask is to correct my wrongs to right. For the past eight, seven, eight months, I've been sitting in Jefferson County, Jefferson County, going to AA, going to church, and going to talk to me to help. I can be all stem sisters and give me a chance to prove it. Okay. Um, what about this? Uh, drug usage that I keep reading about in here. What's that all about? I was taking forward and drinking liquor. I was under the influence. I was on the down. I can't hear you and I can't hear you. I was taking forward and drinking liquor at the time. I can't hear you. I was drinking liquor, taking forward and smoking, smoking weed at the time. Do you see anything wrong with that? I do. Yes, sir. Because we have marijuana use. We, on the marijuana, when did you start using marijuana? Yeah. How old were you? 15. This says 14 in the pre sentence report. Uh, where were you getting marijuana from at 14 years of age? I'm sorry? My cousins. Your cousins gave it to you? Well, what are families for? Well, that's terrible. They're not supposed to cause you to commit crimes, which is terrible. What about Xanax? When did you start using that? 18. Okay. How old are you now? 21. Okay. And this ecstasy, what about that one? 20. And where are you getting these illegal drugs from? Where? Like in the South Park, South Indian area. The South Indian area. Around Bowen. They're just there for anybody to purchase, right? Yeah. Well, you don't read about that on the Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, reports uh, because it's something that's shameful. It's it's criminal, and but you know that, right? Okay. So, what did you do here in this event where you're charged with all these crimes? What exactly did you do that was wrong? Being forward and not reported. Not forward, yes. Okay, so? Be a father who did not report it. What, what was it that was criminal? What was the bad things that happened that you were part of? The shooting, the drug use, and the car use. It looks like uh, this... Uh, Tell me about the the vehicle, uh, the the attempt you did, you did according to this indictment. You're going to interrupt me because she can't take down both of us speaking. Let me see. Okay, um, in twenty three CR two 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 two. This is the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The indictment that you pleaded guilty to 
in April. It states that you intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly cause bodily injury to another person by using an automobile, namely a de deadly weapon. So uh, that means you've inferred that, uh, according to this pre-sentence report, that you attempted to run over somebody with the car. That's what you pleaded guilty to under oath, right? Yes, do you see anything wrong with that? Oh, okay. I mean, that's the way people get killed, right? It's a 4,000-pound missile, and when you run over someone, 4,000 pounds is going to squash them and do terrible tissue damage. Then the other cases you uh, uh, are accused of uh, shooting uh, this person with a firearm, but you weren't the one holding the firearm, but you knew somebody was with you with the firearms and you were driving the car and you were part of, when you're through interrupting, I'll speak. You were part of the whole plan by striking people, going after people uh, to harm them. And you have uh, people with you who were, it was like several people in the vehicle, including someone shooting an, uh, um, an assault rifle at others. See, there are approximately 10 bullet holes in the front east side of a home, three bullet holes in the south side of the house. My goodness. So we're driving over people. We're shooting at homes. You you got to see terrible things. I mean, that's no way to be living in a city, right? Okay, all right. And then these drugs. Where are you getting these drugs from? The name. I know how to have no attention to using them. I know you're you're saying you are remorseful and you don't have any intention of doing this, but how do you take back what's already been done? You can't undo that, can you? Okay. And well it has a price that you have to pay. I mean, this is just my goodness, a terror like terrorism. In the middle of the city, which is happening too often. Okay. Well, what's state asking for? That years and time. And uh, Mr. Lewis, go ahead. You can end. Well, Judge, we were asking that she is placed on deferred adjudication. She's more than willing to comply with any conditions that the court will deem appropriate, or the court on probation will deem appropriate. Uh, in the, in the matter, I think, like I said before, I think it's several vehicles available through probation that she could definitely benefit from to not to not ever be in a situation like this again. Help, it would help her to not be in a situation like this again. And uh, and, and I think she would, she uh, is one who, like I said before, who I think the future is still salvaged. Somebody that can still, maybe still pick herself up and move on. <clears throat> Right. Anything else to add here? All right. What, in conclusion, what the court uh, is looking at here is you are looking at 60 years in prison from all of these cases. You understand? 60 years in prison because each crime here has its own punishment range. Somehow your uh, attorney has remarkably fashioned a, a deal where the worst you can get is the maximum you can get is eight years in prison, and those are to run concurrently to each other. So he's gone from the exposure of 60 years in prison to uh, eight years, which is remarkable. But the uh, problem here with your uh, cases and your involvement here is we're using 
deadly weapons, vehicles, guns, and shooting at homes, uh, driving, hitting people with vehicles on the street. I mean, it's just lawless. It's violent. It's, inc it's the thing movies are made of, and it shouldn't be in our town. It happens, but when it happens, people have to know when you're going to commit violent acts where people can get killed easily with a deadly weapon that it has consequences yes. and you can't say, well, I can always fall back on that deferred probation where I'm going to get probation and not be found guilty. Okay. These are bad. Yes. This is three. And well, it's actually a fourth case. that's going to be dismissed. That was indicted, which was another uh, deadly conduct, which is a third degree felony. I'm going to uh, make the findings as follows, that in each of these cases, and this is 23 CR 1738, 1739, and 2222, you have pleaded guilty voluntarily. You were mentally competent to do so. You understand that and appreciate the consequences of pleading guilty. There's sufficient evidence supporting your guilty pleas from States Exhibit 1 admitted in each of these cases to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And I now find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in these cases. I am following these agreements. You are hereby sentenced to confinement in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to serve a term of eight years in each case. These will all run concurrently together. In each of these judgments, the judgments will reflect that deadly weapons, namely a firearm, were used in cause numbers 1739 and 1738, and in 2222, a deadly weapon, namely an automobile, was used in the commission of that crime. It's really hard to, uh, th this is just terrorism. Uh, and it's hard for these violent acts, which uh, it's remarkable that there wasn't a, a, a group of people killed. And that's what keeps you from looking at life imprisonment on each event. Uh, so it's clear the message we're trying to send is this is clear that this is uh, behavior that is unacceptable and and you can't blame it on voluntary drug use that you elected to choose and the group of people that you elected to run around with again we're shooting at homes driving and hitting people with vehicles that has its consequence and you are punished therefore all right. Do you understand what has happened today? Yes, okay. Good luck to you. You'll be good credit, of course, for all time you have served.